Did you know? When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. The people in the Bible were seeing something, something beyond the average eye, something revealed only in heavenly realms. They were seeing the revelation of who God is, the revealing of the unveiling of something amazing. They were living and experiencing this revelation. It wasn't just some scripture verse they learned in Sunday school. It was being revealed before their very eyes, and they were living it, writing about it, experiencing it. When someone wrote, I look up and see where my hope comes from, they actually were seeing something. God is so amazing, so wonderful. He deserves to be seen for who he really is, not who we have made him out to be. I mean, we want everyone to see us and judge us for who we really are. Why wouldn't God want the same? We all think we know exactly who God is and what he looks like. But all too often, our image of God is way off and isn't based on actually seeing him, but on ideas and traditions passed down by others who they themselves probably have never truly seen the Lord. Who do you say God is? Where does it come from? Where are you getting your revelation? What is your source? Is it what your church says? What your grandparents say? What religious tradition says? What some famous person on YouTube who went to heaven for 20 minutes says? What the world says? Or what that Netflix special on seeing Jesus says? Or is what you are saying about God being revealed from heaven itself? Who is God to you? Just someone you've heard about or read about? Or someone you have seen with your own eyes? Now a revelation is probably hitting you. The revelation that you don't have a revelation. You just have information passed down from some other source, passed down again and again. Think about this. Just how many churches are full of people, and even pastors and leaders, who have never really encountered God, have never seen who He truly is, probably more than we realize. But yet they still get together week after week, serving a God they don't even know, and have never even seen. They only have an idea, a picture of who God is, and what He looks like, but most of the time that picture isn't very accurate. God is far better than we can imagine. And God deserves to be seen, really seen for who He is and not what we, the world, and religion have made Him out to be. People today have so many opinions about who God is and what He wants, and yet most of these people have no idea what God really even looks like. Find this hard to believe? Okay, let's go even farther. Take Saul of Tarsus, who later became the Apostle Paul. When Paul was Saul, he encountered God on the road to Damascus. In fact, he encountered God in such a dramatic, powerful, and totally unexpected way that it shocked Paul. Instead of, oh, hey, God, it's you. His response was, who are you? Who is this radiant, powerful, all-consuming person who has just completely brought me to my knees? And this was Saul, the perfect Pharisee. He had served God diligently all his life. In fact, more diligently than any other religious person of the time. The Bible says this about Paul, And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. Who today can say they are faultless in their religion? Paul was the poster child of the perfect religious specimen. Today he would be touted as one of the great religious leaders of our time, but yet even Paul had never truly seen or encountered God. Again, how many churches are full of people who have served God their whole life, but wouldn't recognize Jesus if he ever really showed up. In fact, if Jesus ever really showed up in our church, our response would most likely be, who are you? And his response to us would most likely be the same as it was to Saul. Why are you fighting me? Most of us only know the image that has been given to us. And sadly, most churches are portraying a poor image of who God really is. We all need to really look up and see who God really is 
instead of assuming we know. When you really see God, it changes you. You don't just continue on the path you are going like it's no big deal. When people in the Bible really saw God, their whole lives changed forever. Job served God faithfully. In fact, God even told the devil, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. So this is someone God apparently knows about and even speaks highly of. Read about Job sometime. He went through quite the ordeal and his friends and him sat around talking about God as if they knew him, trying to figure out why Job was going through all he was. But in the end, after all that Job went through, he finally really saw God. And his response was, I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. I think this is true for most of us. God, we have only ever heard about you. If we could ever really see you, we would shut our mouths and repent and stop saying the things we are saying and stop doing the things we are doing, for we are wrong about you. Repentance is truly seeing this God you serve but have never seen and realizing you were wrong about him this whole time. When the prophet Isaiah saw the Lord, his response was, Woe to me! I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Translation, I am a wretch, everyone around me is a wretch, and we are all toast. Unless God does something, none of us stands a chance. I don't really get this vibe in most churches. I think most churches must be full of people who have never truly seen God, including the pastors and leaders. Otherwise, they wouldn't be saying most of what they are saying or doing most of the things they are doing. Just go on Facebook or social media and look at what most Christians are saying and you realize that they probably have never really seen God. They only serve an image of God created by men, one that suits them better. The people in the Bible actually saw God and their revelation about Him was from heaven, not man. But today, we just have passed down information that barely resembles God, and we go along with it blindly. In fact, most churches have so misrepresented God that a lot of people today want nothing to do with church. Why, because they are lost sinners who don't want God? No, because they are sick of empty, worthless religion that produces nothing. They want something real. God deserves to be seen, and people all over deserve a real chance to see God for who He really is. When you really see God, you see how absolutely pure, holy, majestic, and good He is. It ruins you. It unhinges you, because He is so much more amazing than we are or can even understand. Revelation 1.17 says, When I saw Him, I fell at His feet as though dead. When was the last church service you were in when people dropped to the floor as if dead because they had really seen God? Well, that was the olden days. God doesn't do that anymore. Are you sure? Or are you listening to people who have never seen God talk about things they have no idea about? Are you willing to take that chance? Really seeing God shuts the mouth of gossips. It turns the hearts of the wicked. It brings the proudest to their knees and silences darkness. We stop tearing down others. We stop acting certain ways. We are more cautious with what we do or say. Why? Because we are morally correct and want to do the right thing? Because our religion dictates what we should act like? No, it's because we have seen the Lord and we are nothing like Him. We are undone and must change. Some of the greatest men and women of the Bible saw God and were crushed by the sinfulness of their hearts. Yet we are so comfortable with the condition of ours. What makes us so much better than these great men and women? Are we that much more righteous? Or have we never really seen? In order to see, you have to look. Duh, big revelation, right? But seriously, where are we looking? Our lives are so busy and full. Usually, we are only looking at our small little world. Our jobs, what needs to be done, children, bills, shopping, entertainment, running here, running there. We have this little bubble of our own little world that most of us live in. We barely look outside our little realm at other people, let alone look up and try to catch a glimpse of God. And besides all that, a lot of churches don't allow the opportunity to really see God. Most are just feeding on the self-centeredness of our lives. 
We should be going to church to actually see God, to look up and strain until we catch a glimpse. After all, isn't that what church should be about? To go and worship and look up and see God and stop seeing everything else? To stop looking at our lives and our problems and our worries and just look up and see. See the God who created the universe, who holds all creation in his hands. To put aside our preconceived notions and all of our knowledge and all of our understanding. To put aside the images we have, the information we know, and really allow ourselves to see God for who he is. God deserves to be seen. He is standing above everything all day long, doing nothing but good, radiant, captivating, holy. But he is covered up by so much misinformation, so many false images, ideas, and opinions of who he is. Covered by so many other non-important things, so many other gods wanting to make him look bad, covered up by so much religious tradition. Don't take anyone else's word for it. Look and see for yourself who God is and what he really looks like. Look and see and decide for yourself and let what you see change you forever. Find a church where God and not man is on display, where he is allowed to be as visible as he wants to be. A place where our lives centered around him. A place where you can look up and see clearly who God really is. Then you can decide if God is worth it or not. But don't make that decision until you have truly seen him. He at least deserves that much. <laughs>